Hey guys, good to be with you this morning. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to speak. Um, you guys are incredible. Uh, thank you all for all that you do. Uh, today's message is entitled, Peace, Refocus in Controversy. Uh, lead scripture is Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Let's pray. God, we love you so much, and we're thankful for you. We're thankful for this opportunity to come to meet with you, to grow in our faith, and hopefully continue to advance this gospel message forward. God, we're here because of you, your life-changing grace that you've given to us. Now I pray that you give us that same love to give out to others. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So thank you all for joining us this morning. I have to admit... This is a sermon that God has been preaching to me for about the past two months, and it's not exactly one I wanted to preach live, but when he asks you to do something, you do it, right? Absolutely. It should be easy to give. In 2015 and 2004, this is an easy sermon to give, but given the context of 2020, it's considerably more difficult. Why? Because everybody wants to cancel everybody else. If you don't know what that term means, it's basically, I don't like what you're doing, therefore I'm going to pay you no attention. So for instance, my wife sings way better than me, way better, like way better, so I'm going to cancel you. Uh, Devin in the back, he's been working hard all weekend smoking these meats. Uh, we had uh, pork yesterday because brisket was too expensive, and it was really good, but Devin didn't give me sweet tea, so... With barbecue, got to have sweet tea. So, Devin, you are canceled. Um, Cheyenne over here, uh, she is one, a great faithful student. She, you can count on her every single Wednesday night to be there and to serve. And you make me look bad. So, I'm going to cancel you. I wish I could be more like you. So, so, there we go. That's silly, I know. But our society does that in today's world. We don't like something and we just say, okay, we're done with you. Let's move on to something else. And that can be a huge problem, especially if we let that infiltrate the church. Because let's face it, if someone walks through those doors and they're different than you and I, and we don't like that from the get-go, they will never step foot through those doors ever again. And quite possibly never step through the doors of a church, period, ever again. And so it can get really dangerous really quick. Everybody wants peace, but under our current pressures, let's face it, we got pandemics going on, we see injustices going on, everybody is looking to be offended. Our level is set right here when it needs to be way down here. We prefer to speak our mind at times instead of being willing to listen. And sometimes if we speak before we realize it, we can say something we regret we would say. In this world right now, in our country right now, we see division, we see offense, we see disagreements, and that's fueling a hatred towards a brother and from the Christian community that'll never be acceptable. No, we're called to love. We're called to care. We're also, we realize our opinions and our thoughts and our views might be different, but their life matters too much to us to, to cause hate and to let hate drive a wedge between us and them. For instance, if you're on Facebook any sort of time, you're going to come up with these four disagreements. You're going to see them everywhere. Uh, first is this, a safety mask. Have you seen that on social media? People saying this is either government control. They say it's a wise thing to do. What's the truth? I don't really know. I'm not here to give you my own opinion. I'm just here to speak what God would say in this situation. So there we go. You see Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter. Huge disagreements there. Should we stand or kneel for the national anthem? Lots of disagreements there. It's also an election year, so you know what that means. See a lot of attack ads for one candidate or the other. My thought is, why can't we just respect the person, whoever it is? I might not be a Democrat, or a Republican, I'm not going to share with you my own personal beliefs, but if I don't agree with one person, I'm not going to throw stones at them. If I don't agree with the other person, I'm not going to throw arrows at them. 
Uh, we are called to be bigger than that. We're called to love because God loves us. When I just mentioned a few of these issues, I guarantee you our blood began to rise. If I would have shared with you my opinion, you would have wanted to throw a tomato at me. That's fair. As, as we talk about these issues, it's easy to cause offense. Today I'm not here to cause offense with you. I'm here to love you and to point you in the direction on how we can manage and, and navigate cancel culture 2020. When on Facebook and we respond to comments, did we cause offense? Did our statement change anyone's mind? Did we hurt our Christian witness? Was the argument worth the time? Was it worth the aggravation? All good questions to ask and questions we should ask before exchanging in dialogue. Matthew chapter 17, today we're going to be looking at verses 24 through 27. We find Jesus going to the temple and we see the issue of the temple tax. Verse 24, when they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax went up to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the tax? He said, yes. And when he had came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from others? And when he had said from others, Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea, cast a hook, and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that, give it to them for me and for yourself. So today we find the issue of whether Christ should pay the tax or not. Now Christ was the Son of God, and so technically he is not required to pay, but he decides to anyways. Let's look at the tax for a moment. This tax was used for the temple purposes of uh, buying offerings or, or buying uh, whatever they need to keep the function of the temple going. And they started to accumulate a nice profit out of the deal, and so the Jewish temple authorities began constructing a nice gold vine. Uh, what would you think if we did that in here today? We, we took your money and we fashioned a nice golden vine that we hung right there. You might be a little bit frustrated, right? That does not seem like a fair use of the money. Knowing that, there are many people during this time who refused to pay the tax, but went into the temple anyways. And so Christ walks in, and the temple keepers are there, and they said, hey, are you going to pay this tax or not? Jesus didn't have to, but in my, pers in my interpretation, this is the reason he did it. He didn't necessarily do it because he was required to. He didn't necessarily do it because it was tradition. He didn't necessarily even do it because it was the right thing to do. He paid the temple tax because he did not want to offend. He did not want to offend. He teaches Peter a very valuable lesson that God can even use a fish to create money. Pretty cool on that. But his goal was not to offend. We can learn a lot from that today. It's so easy to be offended. It's so easy to be offensive. If we don't like something we see, we speak our mind right then, right there. And by doing so, we can get into a lot of trouble really quick. And even more dangerously, we could hurt our Christian witness. Matthew 5, 9, we read this already. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peacemakers. We're reconciled in our relationship with God. We have allowed him to come into our life to take away our sins, creating a right standing between us and the Father. It's exactly what we need because we understand we're not perfect. And there's nothing that we can do to create perfection. No, it's a gracious gift from God. We need it. But we don't stop at just our own personal forgiveness. We extend that forgiveness to other people. Because we also understand not only did Christ die for us, but he died for everybody in this world. Regardless of race, skin color, socioeconomic impacts, whatever the case may be, Christ died for you. And he died for me. Because of this, we pass it on to others. We need to be a peacemaker, but what is a peacemaker? According to Webster's Dictionary, it's a person who brings about peace. Thank you. That was very helpful. Um, 
But I like what they said on the second part, especially by reconciling adversaries. We needed reconciliation with Christ. We made poor choices, but Christ came to forgive us. So he came to establish that right relationship with our Father. But he didn't just do that for me. He did that to people who think differently than I do. He did that for people who look differently than I do. He did it for people who eat different than I do. Christ loves people, and we should too. Therefore, we have some points today that I think can help us navigate cancel culture 2020. Um, I hope they're not offensive to you. They're not supposed to be, but they are to point us in the right direction on what Christ would have us to do. The first one is this. Be gospel-centered and not opinion-motivated. And this is hard. This is really hard. I like to think that my thoughts are 99% of the time correct. They are not. They are not. Many of you already know that because you know I love Tom Brady. Uh, great athlete. Many of you don't like Tom Brady. That's okay. We're allowed to have our differences. We feel like our thoughts have to be correct and we don't want to be wrong. And so when someone challenges our opinions, it's easy to lash out. If someone says, hey, I don't like brisket, I'm going to tell you, you're wrong. You know, I like brisket. But it is too expensive. At Kroger the other day, it was like 60 and 70 bucks, so we bought the $20 pork. Um, yeah, we'll continue on. Our opinions may matter to us, but that doesn't mean they are always grounded in truth. We may think they are. We may claim that they are, but that's not always the truth. The truth is, 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Why did Christ have to die? Because I am imperfect. Because my thoughts aren't always correct. Because my opinions aren't always valid. Because sometimes I think I'm doing what's right, and it's so far from what's right. Christ died to take away my sin, and he did that for all of us. I don't know if you're sinful or not. I don't, you might be perfect. I hope you are. I'm working there. It's, sanctification is both instantaneous and progressive. God completely transforms you when you accept him, but yet it's a process to get where he wants you to go. I'm still working in on that process. I know my opinions are not always right. Sometimes I like to wear jeans with holes in them. My grandpa wouldn't like that. And that's okay. It's different. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's different. And that's okay. Point number two, value your neighbor's humanity above their politics or platforms. This is where it gets hard because we think politics in America are like the driving force. And they're important. They are. You need to vote. You need to uh, go on election day, cast for your vote. You need to do those things. Those are very important. We're one of the only nations in the world who has that opportunity. Take advantage of it. But I do know something that's more valuable in God's sights than my own political viewpoints or platform viewpoints, and that is humanity. God's love for people. While writing this sermon, my daughter was watching Zootopia. It's a, a fun movie for kids. It's a lot of animals, and you have this one animal who's a bunny, and the bunny wants to become a police officer. But the problem was, it was a bunny. All the police officers at this time were big, muscular animals like cheetahs and, and broncos, horses, uh, uh, polar bears. There were a lot, okay? Long story short, there were a lot. But this bunny knew it could make a difference, and it wanted to serve. And at first, the bunny would just give out parking tickets. But by the end of the movie, the bunny saves the world. I share that story with you because it's easy to look at that bunny and say, that bunny can never amount to much. That bunny is so little. It's so in it, insignificant. It'll never make a difference. But honestly, God uses the weak to do incredible things for his purpose. God uses not only murderers, but tax collectors and the less than 
to bring forth this kingdom into this world. And because of the disciples, we have a faith we get to stand for today. Thankful for that. I'm thankful God didn't look at that person and said, you're not good enough. You don't understand things right. He looked at the person. He looked at the heart. And I think that's what we should do as well. I know we will have disagreements. I know our viewpoints won't always line up 100% of the time, every time. But God still loves the person. He always loves the person. In Mark 12, 28 through 31, we see this. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. He could have stopped there, but he didn't. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There was no commandment greater than these. As a Christ follower, everything I say, I do, I type should be motivated not by my own personal opinion or political viewpoint, but by the love of God. That is the driving force, and it should always be the driving force. I know that our thoughts and values are important to us as Americans. But honestly, if we push that agenda more than our love for Christ, we run the risk of pushing people away from him. And that's where it gets real dangerous. One thing I do know is when I die, politics stays, platform stays, jobs stay, finances stay. My Tom Brady collection, it stays. But what doesn't, the people I impact on the way. The people I display love to on the way. The teenagers I get to work with on a regular basis. Uh, the people I meet on the street corner and have an opportunity to pray with. That's the kind of things that last. People will often disagree. And that's okay. We're not going to see eye to eye on everything. But remember, they are human. And God's love for them is important. And it's just as great as his love for you. And that love is powerful. Third point, seek peace over proving a point. Man, I like to prove a point sometimes. But I shouldn't always. Proverbs 15.1 says this, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Part of the problem we're seeing in today's world, lots of anger, lots of hate. Lots of discord, lots of animosity, lots of jealousy. And it's feeding into division. I don't want that to creep into the church at all. we got to fight for what's right. But how do we seek peace when we may not agree with someone? How can we come to a mutual understanding when we don't agree? To that I say, focus on the light. Focus on what's matter. Focus that God is on the throne and then strive to honor them. Avoiding hatred, avoiding animosity. Show that you care about them. Show that you're willing to listen first than trying to get your point across. 1 John 2, 9 through 11 says this, Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there was nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. We do have differing opinions in life, and that's okay. But what's not okay is unrest, hatred, strife. Those things have no place in the kingdom of God. So therefore, seek to understand, learn to listen, empathize. I couldn't say that word in the first service for whatever reason. Love goes a long way. You know, during this pandemic season, I expected to see people rally together and unite. That hasn't happened the way I thought it would. I was around during 9-11. I was like a, a little eighth grader. And I remember it just like it was yesterday. It was terrifying. But you know what? The, the nation united. We came together. We fought for one another. 
Church attendance skyrocketed during that time. We learned to love. Why has that not happened during a sickness? And I know some people have views on the sickness that is being manipulated for political gain and what have you. Uh, but I do know this, my grandma is sick with COVID and it's terrifying actually. Uh, she's 80 years old. Uh, she has dementia. She's in a memory care unit in Tyler. And I don't know what the truth is. I just want my grandma to be okay. That's what matters to me. You matter to me. Our neighbors matter to me. And the skin color, it doesn't bother me. African Americans are very important to me. I have some working on our youth ministry team. They're very important to me. Uh, whether you're from Pakistan or whether you're from India or whether you're from China or whether you look like me, you matter. You absolutely matter because Christ created you in his likeness and his image. If he loves you, I love you too. My neighbor's salvation is what matters most to me. I will never expect a non-believer to act like a believer. They don't know God. They haven't experienced God the way I do. But I desire all non-believers to know God. And they will never find him if I only cast judgment towards them. I have to be better. The church in America, the church of the world, has to be better at loving people even if they are sinful. We remember a time when we had sin caked all over us. And someone loved us. Let us return the favor. Also know this, humans are not the enemy. Satan is. Satan's the enemy. Humans are not. At this time, I want to share with you a story of something I, I've witnessed on social media lately. Um, and it was hard for me to see. Um, it was a post about essential workers and doctors and farmers and, and workers. And we need those guys. And then they flipped it, because we do need those guys. Uh, they flipped it around and said, but I've never needed an actor or a athlete. I thought back in my life, and I remember 2013 when my father passed away. And the same week, uh, my grandfather had a stroke. It was a very difficult week. So I remember that week going to visit my grandfather in the hospital, and the cowboy game was on. Both my father and my grandpa loved the cowboys. I liked the cowboys too, uh, a lot, but not as much as those guys. And here I am, and uh, Cowboys are at first having a bad game. And here comes Tony Romo. With a minute left in the game, with a broken back, the broken back would put him out the rest of the season. He drives the length of the field, scores a touchdown to win the game. It was emotional. Still is. I walk out of that hospital room and tears are in my eyes. I felt like he did that for me. Now I know he didn't. It's a sport. You play to win the game. But that moment meant something to me. I don't know what your view on professional athletes are. It doesn't really matter to me at this time. But I, knew, I do know God loves them. I do know God loves our actors as well. I do know he created them in his likeness and his image as well. And although I might not always agree, I can love them. Because I know that there are times when I need them. Uh, maybe not physically. They don't put food on my table. But they do give me hope. They do bring me joy. And I do need that. The reality is we all need each other in this life. People will not always agree, but they are not the enemy. Ephesians 6.12 says this, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. People are never the enemy. The enemy is the enemy. Satan is the enemy, and he is looking to devour anyone he can. I do believe people can be motivated by evil. We've seen that in this course of history. But they are not the evil enemy themselves. Satan is that guy. So remember that. The battle is bigger than you and I. The battle we face is a spiritual one. Always remember that. 
especially when someone might question our viewpoints. At the heart of the gospel, we find God's love for people, people of every kind. If we want to fight, let's choose to fight to bring individuals of all nationalities to Jesus. That's the biggest fight we could ever participate in in our entire life. It's what the, why the church is here. It's why the church has ex- existed for uh, 2,000 years. Luke 15 verse 3 says this, Then Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. The reality is we have a lot of lost sheep out there. If the church wants to argue viewpoints, we might not see that one come to know Christ. It can be a real dangerous game. It can be real dangerous. My heart is to push no one away, but to chase after that one, because that one matters. And I know if we find that one, all of heaven rejoices. So today, I just wanted to share with you some issues that I've seen. Not to cause division, not to cause controversy, not so that pastor can, can get a lot of angry emails. Sorry if that happens. <laughs> but to show how we can navigate when we don't agree. We love somebody. We love the individual. And we let God's love shine through. Jamie. Jamie. I cannot control what happens from here. Only you can do that. When you go out of these doors, I encourage you to go out and love people the way Christ loves you. And I know you will because you display that on a regular basis. You display that in your missions giving. You display that when someone walks in these doors. You care for people. You always have. And I pray that you always will. That's what we need right now. How will we treat people of differing views? I encourage you, treat them through God's love. When there's a disagreement, don't get angry, don't get upset. Realize God loves them, and he loves you too. My desire is that all make it to heaven. I don't want to hinder people in that process. My opinions may be different, but their very soul is at stake. That matters to me more than a vote than a stance, than an issue, than a color of a skin. The person matters to God, and I pray that that person matters to me also. Let me pray over you. God, we love you so much, and we're thankful for you. God, I know this is a challenging message, but you're good, and you can use messages to speak to people, and I pray that you do that right now. God, I'm not the answer personally. Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ can bring healing to a broken land. God, Jesus Christ can heal division. God, Jesus Christ can push out hate. And that's the name we're calling on today. We need you, God. We need you more than ever before. So I pray that you be with us, that you be with our people. God, I pray that you motivate us to love like you did, to be peacemakers. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.